Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum students As you know we are reading An Ode to a Nightingale by John Keats John Keats uh, is a romantic poet and his time period is from 1795 to 1821 He died very young barely 25 years old but he wrote many famous poems among those um, his odes are very famous and uh, uh, there are some uh, odes included in your syllabus so uh, we are reading this ode we have read four stanzas in the previous lecture and now the remaining four will be covered in this uh, lecture inshallah you have learnt about the poet that his life was not very happy and he uh, sees many sufferings and pains throughout his life and there are references to these sufferings and miseries in his poems and uh, also in this ode we have seen um, uh, uh, many references uh, uh, to his uh, sufferings so in this uh, uh, poem uh, we have read that the poet is listening to the song of nightingale and he is enjoying the song the song of nightingale works as an intoxicant to him as uh, it uh, drowns his um, senses and he f feels numbness as he has taken some uh, intoxicant like hemlock or opium or uh, a drought from Lethe uh, river and the water of that river causes forgetfulness and he forgets his surroundings and his pains for the time being and he lost in the word of the beauty and the word of the sweet songs of the nightingale. He wants to join the word of the nightingale which is full of beauty and uh, uh, he feels that uh, there is no uh, um, pain and there are no sorrows in the word of nightingale so he wants to join the nightingale through various ways first he wishes uh, to go to nightingale by taking some uh, wines then he wishes to uh, uh, go to the word of beauty uh, of the word of sweet songs uh, through his imagination, imaginative power of poetry and then he feels that as he is already with him as his fancy already takes him to the uh, nightingale and uh, he finds himself as he is sitting in the woods where the nightingale is singing and uh, um, in the loud voice making the uh, um, atmosphere of the woods sweet and full of uh, joyousness and full of beauty so he finds himself in the jungle as uh, he is uh, uh, sitting in the um, uh, woods which is uh, f overgrown with the trees and there are too much shadow there is too much shadow too, too much trees uh, overgrown there that the uh, fo uh, foliage of the trees um, has not allowing the is not allowing the um, uh, moonlight or the uh, light of the stars to reach upon the earth as he is feeling that moon is shining and stars are surrounding the moon upon the sky when the breeze blows the uh, light of the moon reaches to the earth but uh, um, otherwise there is uh, uh, darkness uh, in the woods where he is sitting and with his feel he is um, uh, telling the reader that the paths in the jungle are winding and zigzag and they are full of moss now uh, we have to read this uh, fifth stanza in which he says i can't see i cannot see what flowers are at my feet nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs the poet is unable to see what kind of flowers are growing uh, near his feet where he is sitting because of darkness he is unable to see the uh, flowers with his eyes 
but uh, he is feeling that there are lot of flowers around nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs uh, nor he is able to see the flowers which are growing upon the branches of the uh, trees incense here means sweet smelling flowers which are hanging upon the uh, branches of the trees but in embalmed darkness guess each sweet embalmed darkness is here again uh, transferred epithet which means that the sweet smell the fragrance of the flowers make the darkness the whole dark atmosphere uh, uh, fragrant and uh, uh, the poet uh, with his uh, uh, sense of smell can guess that what type of flowers are growing around him and where with the seasonable month and dows the grass the thicket and the fruit trees wild and uh, he is saying that the seasonable month here means the month of spring the month of may has given uh, uh, flowers to everything to grass to the bushes to the fruit trees uh, it is the spring uh, season which uh, um, gives the gifts of flowers to everything around him to every tree and shrub uh, covered with flowers by uh, this month it is the gift of uh, this month that every uh, tree every thicket or uh, on the grass around him is uh, covered with flower and then uh, with the smell the poet can distinguish between the flowers and uh, um, he tells the readers that his sense of smell is uh, so sharp that he can uh, even tell the names of the flowers that what type of flowers are growing around him white hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine fast fading violets covered up in leaves he is saying that with the, uh, the smell he uh, can tell that hawthorns are growing there in the woods uh, the pastoral eglantine these are the names of the flowers and the violets which are very short living flowers are do covered uh, in the leaves of the uh, trees and uh, 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 under the leaves uh, they are hidden but their smell uh, is showing that they are also around and mid may's eldest child the coming musk rose full of dewy uh, wine and then he smells an other uh, flower that is musk rose he calls it the mid may's eldest child because it is the first flower that um, blossoms in the month of may uh, so he uh, says that this first flower or uh, rose flower is also um, uh, blossom blossomed now and its petals are full of juicy wine that is why the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eves uh, can be heard the bu uh, buzzing sound of the flies and bees uh, um, is heard by the poet and um, because they come upon the musk rose to um, suck the juice of that sweet flower so here the poet again Uh, uses the sensuous imagery and arousing the sense of smell as well as the sense of touch here because uh, though due to darkness uh, he is unable to see but with the touch and with feel and with smell he can distinguish among the flowers and he can uh, tell the reader that what type of flowers uh, growing around where he is sitting along with nightingale and enjoying the beauty of the song as well as beauty of the flowers which are grown around them uh, the nightingale and the poet in the next stanza he calls the bird as darkling darkling i listen and for many times i have been half in love with easeful death instead of calling uh, darling and the poet is addressing the bird as darkling because it is sitting in the dark and so it is unable to see it with his eyes but he is listening to his song he says that it is the time uh, many times he listened to the beautiful song sweet song of the nightingale and whenever he listens he 
every time desires to die at that moment because he feels that dying at that moment is full of ease and it will be a painful painless death and player able uh, to die at that moment called him soft names in many amused rhyme then he says that he called the death with uh, uh, beautiful names in his many poems muse rhymes mean uh, in his poems which he uh, has written after much uh, labor and after much thinking in those poems he called uh, the death with soft names means death is not horrible thing for him because he loves death to um, go away to the next world leaving this miserable uh, world behind and uh, he feels that at this time while listening to the song of the nightingale he would prefer to die because it is the best time to pass away from this world to the next world amid the beauty of the song and beauty of the um, nature so he says that uh, uh, to take into the air my quiet breath uh, he requesting the death to take away his breath to the air mix his breath into the air and now more than ever seems it reach to die and he says that um, uh, uh, many times he desires for death but this time it seems to him more appropriate more proper more suitable to die while listening to the song of the nightingale to seize upon the midnight with no pain and he says that take away uh, my breath at this time seize mean end up this uh, history of my life the story of my life here at this time of midnight and take away with uh, you so that i will pass away from this world painlessly and uh, um, in a a uh, moment of ecstasy so that uh, as he uh, says that his senses are numb now he would feel no pain while going at this moment while dying at this moment while uh, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such ecstasy uh, um, so he thinks that ecstasy means thrill rapture uh, he sings that uh, while the bird is singing uh, with full throated ease with full loud uh, voice in uh, such an ecstasy in such an uh, in such a thrill uh, listening to this thrillful song this thrilling song this uh, joyous song he will pass away comfortably without any pain and in this way he uh, desires of death amongst amidst beautiful surroundings and uh, because uh, he uh, thinks that uh, dying painlessly is more preferable to die in the uh, other way still wouldest thou sink and i have ears in vain then another uh, idea comes to the poet that he uh, would die but the um, uh, bird would continue its uh, song as the um, poet thinks that bird is immortal his song is also immortal he will never cease singing and in this way he goes on singing even after his death so he says that i have ears in vain at that time his ears uh, cannot listen him could not uh, cannot listen him any more because his uh, ears would also die with him and his sense of uh, listening will um, vanish away with him so he cannot listen to the sweet song any more to thy high requiem, uh, uh, requiem become a sod and he says that when he become a, a part of the earth then his uh, her uh, song seems to him a uh, uh, requiem mean me uh, a, a sad song or a song of mourning at that time the song of uh, happiness will change into the song of mourning at the death of the poet then uh, uh, he calls the um, bird as an immortal bird thou wast not born for death 
he says that you are a bird uh, which uh, uh, can never face death who will never um, uh, die and you are immortal not like human beings you are uh, human beings are mortal but you are immortal so the poet thinks the bird as immortal because he sees that from generation to generation the, um, the bird is heard um, the song of the bird is heard and um, uh, even it would be heard in the coming um, years and the coming generations will also enjoy its song so it seems to the poet that the bird is immortal so he says to the bird uh, that uh, um, the bird is not uh, born for death and no hungry generations tread the down and then he says that human generations human beings are very cruel but these cruel human beings cannot be able to cause you is uh, your extinction uh, because you are always heard around so the bird was heard by the um, past um uh, centuries past uh, in, the hist- uh, in the history of the people and now it would be heard uh, uh, forever so the voice he- i hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperors and clowns he says that this voice was heard um by the ancient emperors and kings and clowns and uh, this night he is also hearing this uh, beautiful song of the nightingale this all shows that um, it is a an immortal bird and would die uh, die uh, will die never it would uh, uh, it will never face death and it is an immortal bird perhaps the self same song that found a path through the sad heart of ruth when sick for home she stood in tears amid uh, uh, the alien corn now here the poet refers to a mythological story that uh, um, uh, there is a girl uh, who marries to a man from an alien land and uh, after marriage she goes with him but soon after their marriage her husband dies and she has to live in that alien land with uh, her uh, mother in law uh, uh, in that strange land she stands in the um, uh, crop of the corn and she is cutting the corn and while she is weeping for her a uh, homeland and she is um, uh, missing uh she was missing her homeland uh, the poet feels that when she was so much sad and she was so much uh, um, uh, disturbed and uh, sad for her home uh, the same song the same uh, sweet song of the nightingale uh, would have been a source of solace for her source of pleasure for her in that sadness so uh, uh, for the poet the song is the source of player for uh, all the generations through the same that often times hath charmed magic casements opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn then the poet says that the same song um, uh, would be heard by the would have been heard uh, by those maidens who were made captives uh, in the uh, castles by the side of the uh, uh, dangerous seas they are alone there and they would uh, they were uh, sad there when they uh, were made captives there they sit in the casements mean um, in the windows of the castles and they uh, heard the sound of the nightingale which uh, gives uh, uh, which gave them happiness and they uh, 
become relaxed after listening to uh, the song of the nightingale at that dangerous place in fairy lands forlorn in uh, strange lands they were uh, alone there but only the song of the nightingale was a source of comfort for them source of pleasure for them then and the word forlorn uh, forlorn refers to loneliness alone this word forlorn reminds the poet for uh, that he uh, is also alone every man every person comes alone in this world and uh, goes away from this world alone so the word forlorn reminds the poet that he is in fact not with the nightingale but he is all alone in this world forlorn the very word is like a bell in this last stanza the poet um, realizes the situation that he is all alone he is lonely and he has to come to his real world from this world of imagination in which he is enjoying the song of the nightingale this word forlorn works as a bell for the poet as the bell the sound of the bell brings a person um, back uh, to his reality or uh, um, awakes a person from his sleep similarly the uh, word forlorn works like a bell and brings the poet back to his world of reality from his world of imagination uh, from the world of sweet songs and beauty in uh, uh, world of beauty to the world of reality world of misery world of troubles so the poet says to toll me back from thee to my soul self this word forlorn works like a bell and brings me back from your world beautiful word uh, your sweet word to uh, my lonely self and he feels that he is all alone adieu thy fancy the fancy cannot cheat so well then he says uh, goodbye uh, to the nightingale and says that the fancy imagination cannot uh, cheat for long the word of imagination has to end up uh, it is the time to end of imagination he cannot live in the world of imagination for long as she is famed to do deceiving elf and he says that fancy imagination is known for its deceiving nature elf is a, a mythological creature so he is saying like deceiving elf the imagination the fancy is also known for its cheating nature but it cannot cheat a person for long and he has to come back to his um, reality uh, once for all adieu adieu thy plaintive anthem fades now he says goodbye goodbye uh, your uh, sad song uh, is fading now now the song uh, which is sweet a uh, moment ago uh, seems to him uh, plaintive sad uh, to the poet because he uh, thinks that he has to come to his real life and he cannot live in the world of imagination and world of joy forever so he feels that as he is coming to his real life the song of the uh nightingale is fading away and nightingale is flying away and away from him uh, past the near meadows and he say, um, feels that the uh, bird is flying over the meadows and going away from him over the still stream over the up the hillside and now it's buried deep uh, uh, it's uh, um, uh, flying away from the poet and passing over the hills and uh, streams he it has gone far away now and his uh, her voice buried deep gone away no more heard by the poet in the next valley glades and he feels that as a nightingale has gone to the next valley and uh, um, for the poet he uh, 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 it is a uh, Uh, gone far away and the poet is unable to listen the song anymore 
was it a vision or a waking dream now the poet is uh, in uh, confusion in perplexity is unable to understand whether um, he is seeing some vision or uh, he is uh, day dreaming that uh, he uh, when he is hearing the song of the nightingale whether it is vision or day dreaming he is unable to um, judge uh, he is in confusion perplexity fled is that music the music ends up music has gone music is no more heard do i awake or sleep so the poet is uh, asking to himself and uh, um, uh, try to know his condition that whether he is sleeping he is dreaming or he whether he is in a wakeful situation so at this confusion the poem ends it is a beautiful sensuous poem here is much sensuous imagery is used by the poet many characteristics of uh, poets uh, um, uh, many uh, keats poetry is seen in this poem so learn this poem um, deeply try to understand each and every word and explain the stanzas carefully okay this is the lecture um, now we have finished this ode so Uh, you have to explain this poem and uh, try to understand every stanza of the poem carefully okay allah